Hey everyone, welcome back to the Python Image Library Module Tutorial Series, and I think we are finally ready to move on. You know? <laughs> I mean, we've been stuck in the land of simple image for a while now, but let's check out what more the Python Image Library has to offer for us. Let's move on to Image Ops. Now, Image Ops stands for Image Operations, and they're kind of like ready-made processing operations for messing with your image and doing lots of really cool stuff. So, the module is a little experimental, not all of it works, <laughs> and the, the things that do work typically only work on either grayscale images that are just black and white, or RGB images, things that don't have an alpha channel or a transparency like uh, band to them. So that's why in the last tutorial I wanted to show you uh, image mode and strip and merge and everything like that. So I'm going to build up some functionality here. If the mode is going to equal RGBA, if we have the alpha channel, which we know that the file that we're working with right now does, what we'll do is we'll change it to, you know, the uh, regular RGB band, simple RGB without the alpha channel, so we can use some of the functions in our image ops module up here. So you guys know we need to run image.load. R, G, B, and A are going to equal image.split. And, okay, did I say image.strip earlier? I, me I meant to say image.split. I keep getting these things messed up. I keep saying strip when I meant to say split. So, uh, I think actually, yeah, i got to go back and change the video name even. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Um, we're going to split the image, and I didn't think that ticks any arguments, did it? No, it doesn't take any arguments, so what we can do from there is we can make this new image equal to image.merge with the RGB mode and the tuple for or the tuple for RGB. So now I've got our image. Now what we can do is we can actually go through with the image ops argument. What I want to show off here is first the invert function. What this one does is it will return an inverted image, so we'll set image equal to what's being returned to us, and we'll do image ops, because the function lives inside the module, invert, and we'll pass in the image, which of course we have to be image here. Now if I run this code, check it out, I'll go to my desktop here, and here is our modified pi image, with all the colors inverted. Super cool, right? Let's check out some of the other functions that the, uh, the module can offer us. There is um, posterize, image.posterize and uh, the values that I've been playing with the ones that work for me are integers 1, this works okay this probably is not the best image to show it off with <laughs> there are plenty of others that I could be using here and that will actually have a little bit more display and, and better look to it but okay back to what I was talking about the images, the integers that work for me go up until about 8 8 doesn't seem to have much of a change in the image, but if I go any higher, like if I go to 9, and let me get back to it, if I try and run this, it gives me an error. Uh, if I go like 1, back to what we had before, but if I go like 1.2, it doesn't like that, it always wants an integer. Floats don't work for me, so I can't get any lower than 1, and 0 is just not going to do anything. 0 is going to get us a black image. So, 1 through 8 seem to work okay for me, and uh, you should play around with these on other images other than the Python logo, because <laughs> there's not a whole lot of change in this simple, like, only three colors in the image, you know. <laughs> Alright. There's also Solarize, is what I was checking out. Image.Solarize. Actually, image equals image ops, sorry. Image ops.Solarize. Pass in the image, and what this takes is a threshold. Typically, the threshold is 128. If you call the function without the arguments, it'll run to 128. And everything, all the colors that are greater than this 128 value will be inverted. So if we set this to, like, 0, all the colors will be inverted, and we'll have the same uh, output, or at least change modification, as the invert function that we had up top. 255 is going to get us to, like, all the colors that are being solarized, or inverted, and now, if I go 256, though, it gets us back to our original image, so that's kind of the limit there. So, mess around with it, play with it if you want to, but those are three functions that I've been using, 
and that are in the image ops module. So we can move on from simple image in the PIL, the Python image library, and now we're checking out image operations. So invert, posterize, and solarize. I'm going to keep this functionality that converts it to an RGB image if there is an alpha channel, and you might want to do the same thing, because uh, this is going to be pretty handy when we're looking through more of the image ops uh, functions, because typically those only work with RGB. Try it. Let's see if I try and run this without them. It tells me, nope, this is not supported for this image type if I just try and simply invert it. And I think posterize won't work either. I doubt solarize would to begin with either. Nope. So, yeah. Definitely keep this functionality for more of the stuff that we look through with the image ops module. So, okay. Thanks for checking out this video, guys. I hope this is uh, building up a little bit of a toolkit and a repertoire for what you can use with images in Python. And we'll get to learn more stuff in the coming tutorials. Thanks, guys.